you're an actress, stunt woman, I think, at one point. Mm -hmm. You've done a lot of different stuff. Right. Um, it's been a while since you've been here, huh? It's been about 13 years since I've been back here. My daughter lives in Brooksville, so I come down and see her, and I always come to the Blue Arches Clothes when I come. Talk about the days being a mermaid back in the day, in the late 60s, I guess. Yeah, it was 65 to 67, and it was it's the greatest job for a kid out of school. I mean, what else? I was a com competitive swimmer, so what better job could I have gotten? It was just probably the most fun job I ever had. Why was it so much fun? Well, I was into water, and we spent an hour and a half under the water a day. We usually did three shows back then. And, you know, you had camaraderie with all the other women who heard it had. Very spooky, very poignant, very important part of that movie. Well, when we filmed it, uh, Steven Spielberg said to me that uh, after the scene, he wanted everybody in the theater under the seats with the popcorn and bubble gum. So I think we achieved that. And uh, working with him was such a, an honor almost because he was he's such an amazing director. How did you guys pull it off? That scene is, is legendary. The music is legendary. Well, it was a lot of, we did a lot of rigging, the setup to do it, to make me like go back and forth across the, the screen. They put on cut off Levi's and ran stainless steel cables out from me to pilings out in the water and then all the way to the beach. And then they had about eight guys on each line running back and forth to Mars. And I just sat in the middle and screamed and threw my arms around and it worked out beautiful. Now talk about that leg lift, I remember that in the scene. It was kind of neat because he wanted me to go under the water first and then pop back up. Do you, uh, I mean that, that, that scene is really something else. I know, I'm terribly sorry that I scared everybody out of the water. But you got to remember it was just a movie. Um, where do you hear these days? I mean, you probably... And it still is popular. But you know, you have young kids coming up all the time, so every year, you know, every five or six years, there's a whole new group of kids coming up to see. And most kids, you know, a lot of kids just love to be scared. And uh, Stephen told me when I was uh, doing that part, he said, we want, after your your part, we want the, um, all the audience under the seat with the popcorn and the bubble gum. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was a there was a time, there was an interview, it might have been the same interview you took part in, I believe it was on one of the basic cable channels, the screen channel maybe. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> and I think this has been known for a while, that he um, had a mechanical shark and they tried to make it as real looking as possible, but it is 1975, it was. and it just, it looked like a mechanical shark. And he said, the audience just isn't gonna buy it, it's just not gonna scare them. We need to basically keep everything kind of a mystery. And you were the, you were the first person that really jump-started the action and the, and the suspense of that movie. They couldn't see anything, they couldn't see the shark. They I think that's see. more terror than seeing. Yeah. Because, you know, if you're in something grabs you from underneath. I mean, that's terrifying. And to be eaten by an animal, I train wild animals, and to be bit or underneath an animal is just terrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, now how many days did you film that scene? I filmed, I was back there for two weeks, and we probably filmed, oh, probably 10 days out of that time. But like I said, it was only about three hours, and we had to stop filming. Watch you, I probably never would have gotten the job, but I learned to be relaxed in the water here yeah. and how to hold your breath and how not to, you know, panic if something happened. In the water. Let's talk about that a little bit because I wanted to bring that up. Um, was there specific training you remember um, from Wiki Watch that translated perfectly to, to you filming that scene? Well, I did a, um, a ballet leg in the movie, which I, of course, got from here. Yeah. Just being able to uh, relax in the water had so much to do with it here, and a lot of breathing in the water. We used masks when we were here. 
back mm -hmm. in my day, and we only took our masks off to do fish feeding. Mm -hmm. It's a lot harder to do it without a mask. Oh, yeah. A lot. And when you start doing the water ballet and you go upside down, I mean, the water automatically goes in your nose, so you have to know how to cut it off. Yeah. You know, it goes up your nose, but it doesn't go back down your throat. You know, you come out of school, and you don't know what you want to do. And my girlfriend from West Palm, I was living in West Palm at the time, and my girlfriend was going to come up here. And I was going to nursing school, and I just hated it. Yeah. And um, I got her to bring me an uh, application down. And with my mom not knowing, I sent it in. <laughs> and Mr. Mann, who was running the place at the time, called her and said, well, listen, have her come up and come up as if she's going to stay, because I'm sure she'll, you know, make it as well. And uh, so I just came up and stayed. So your mom didn't... My mom, my mom told me when I came home, you're out of the house and you've got to get a job. Yeah. And she knew that they had already called, but she didn't tell me. <laughs> so, you know, for a day or two, I'm panicking, thinking, uh, what am I going to do? I have no idea what I can do. I don't want to work in a grocery store somewhere. Tough love. Your yeah, mind. tough love is exactly what it was. Yeah. And then Mr. Man called. Yeah, they were cut off Levi's with metal sides in them that they used to, like, fly the people in the air with. Mm -hmm. And I had a pair of wetsuit bottoms that came to here because when they're pulling back and forth, it has a tendency to pull you under the water. So I had to stay up as high as I could. So I had fins on and a wetsuit bottom, which helped gave me floatability. Because, like I said, when they pull, they would pull you under. You just had to kick as hard as you could to stay above the surface. So it was a real physical thing. So you had fins and a wetsuit? The bottoms of a wetsuit. Yeah. Not to be lascivious about this, but what were you wearing at the top? You weren't wearing anything, were you? Yeah. I didn't learn that here. <laughs> I got it from the statues out front, though. Oh, I see. I don't know. Probably the whole fact that I even got the job. One of my friends who was a stunt coordinator, and he specialized in water work, had put my name in for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was on another job working Tigers at the time. And they said, well, that's okay, we're not going to film it right away, so we'll hold the interview for you until we get back. And when I came back, I went into the interview. And at the time, Stephen wanted an actress to do it. And I sold my part by saying, if you can have somebody do the acting and do the stunt work, you can get close up. The stunt girl doesn't have to keep her head turned away from camera. You know, so it sells it. Yeah.